Hi everyone, we're going to do a quick overview on the new Harbor Freight Predator 9500 watt inverter generator. Uh, so I've got it out of the box and uh, I've run it for about an hour so far. And uh, I used the Pennzoil 1030 oil that they sell at Harbor Freight for the break-in. Um, so far, um, for the hour, it's run great and uh, starts right up. Um, we're going to do the break-in on it as recommended in the manual and then we're going to switch over to a, a 1030 full synthetic uh, from Honda and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So this is the front panel on the generator and this is where all your hookups are going to be performed. It has a uh, 120, 240, 30 amp, 4 prong. It has two AC 120 20 amp each receptacles look like they're GFIs and uh, it has this 120 30 amp uh, three pong which I think is used on RVs uh, majority on uh, each one has a circuit breaker and our 240 30 amp has an actual breaker here that's uh, it's got its little own cover to protect it from the weather. So do all the circuit breakers. Uh, this is for the uh, parallel that hasn't come out yet, but they are planning on coming out so we can do a parallel and hook two of these generators up together. Um, so we've got uh, also a DC 12 volt with its uh, breaker as well, also covered. And uh, here, you can switch here and you can have uh, 120 only or you can switch over to 240. Um, here we have our fuel select it also uh, is our choke so when you start this thing up you're gonna you're gonna switch it down to start choke and once the engine fires up the manual says about 20 seconds um, honestly from my experience, as soon as it starts up, you can switch it to run and it will run fine. Um, you also have got the uh, USB uh, five volts. One's a one amp rating and one's a 2.1. So that's pretty cool. And um, up here we have our uh, ESC throttle. And what it does is when it's on, it will idle down the motor and um, it, 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 I guess it's to save fuel also. And uh, on demand, it will accelerate itself to where it needs to be to provide the power that is being demanded from the generator. If you put it on off, it'll run basically full full power. It doesn't matter what the load is on the generator or the demand. And uh, finally here, we have our start switch. And it's a three position rocker. And uh, you've got off on the bottom. You've got the middle, which is your run position. And then on the top, you'll have uh, the start and that one is uh, momentary so when you hit that the generator will start as soon as you let go it will automatically come back to the middle position which is run so we'll do a quick walk around it um, it does it does have, it's mounted on four wheels they look like they're solid rubber wheels so you don't have to worry about them going ever flat and um, it does have brakes and it has uh, this brake right here and it has one on, right on the other side opposite side also there which keeps the generator from rolling away on a driveway like mine that's at an incline. And uh, on this side here, you'll have your exhaust with your spark arrestor. And also uh, down here is the outlet for the air that comes out of the engine, which is hot. Uh, this cover here is a two piece cover and um, it's held in by eight millimeter screws, which is there, 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 there. So this cover, the big cover is not needed to be removed to access the oil. Um, all you would need to do is just remove this one here and this one here, and you'll be able to check your oil, which we'll go into now. And of course, that's your recoil backup starter, which I found is not bad considering the size of the engine to start. And on this side of the generator is where you will access your air filter and your battery. Uh, this as well, 8mm screws, 
eight millimeter screw right there. And you'll be able to access your air filter, spark plug, and your battery, which is not hooked up when it comes out of the box, by the way. So one thing I did forget to mention, that it does have a fuel gauge. Uh, obviously, mine's empty. We're gonna put some gas in it now. Harbor Freight does recommend to use a stable fuel, fuel stabilizer. Uh, they also do say that if it's not used, that it will void your warranty. Uh, your fuel cap here is a metal fuel cap and it does have a chain so you don't lose your fuel cap drop it on the floor and it also has a strainer inside so you don't get any gunk particulates or trash inside your fuel tank um it also has got some handy um instructions quick general instructions on how to start the unit and um the uh, warning about the fuel stabilizer and how long to run the generator uh, also something else here to mention is that it it does say it's 63.3 amps total max so that's something to keep in mind uh, when you're uh, planning on buying this generator and what you're gonna use it for and last uh, this generator also comes with a carbon monoxide shutoff and if it's detected, what it does is it will automatically shut off the generator, which is a pretty cool feature. And um, it also has its uh, little oil um, warning alarm. Um, when it does fire up, you'll see the output indicator will turn green. It takes a few seconds for that to come on. And obviously an overload alarm if you're taxing the generator. All right. So we're gonna fire this puppy up and uh show you how easy it is so we're gonna start here by going to our start and choke position and we are gonna come up here to our start switch and pr and press the switch on the top and let it and let it start once it starts up you see And uh, starts up pretty quickly without a problem. Uh, and it is pretty quiet considering the size of the generator and what uh, the power it can provide. Compared to my old uh, 4000 watt uh, Predator generator, which was non inverter. So, right now, the ESC, the throttle control, is in the off position, which lets it run basically at full full power full throttle and when we switch it on you'll see how the power how the rpm drops sorry and uh how much quieter it does get so let's do that right now go here and uh i don't know how noticeable it is on the video but that's a significant reduction in, in sound All right, so another thing the manual does recommend you do, and uh, I do too. So you don't, if you're gonna store this thing, obviously most people are not gonna use it all day long. What you should do is not shut it off here on the off button. What you should do here is you should move your selector switch and go to the off storage mode. And what that does is, it's gonna cut off the fuel tank from the carburetor and what it's gonna happen is it's gonna consume the fuel that's in the fuel line and inside the carburetor. And once that happens, you'll you'll see it surge a fuel time a few times after about three minutes and it will shut off on its own and preserve the carburetor and it definitely works on, on all my other machines here that have a home with gas. Alright, so I've removed both of the eight millimeter screws and uh, grab from the bottom here and the uh, panel will just pop right off very easily so here we got the inside of the generator with its cover off something to note is that the cover is insulated and it's even got a gasket around it you know pretty cool uh, this is your fuel tank right here it's got some insulation tape on it from the heat and there you've got your unit there um air filter 
box right here with your clip right here to be able to access it. <clears throat> and uh, here's your battery. So when this thing comes out of the box, out of the crate, uh, these two terminals will not be hooked up. And it's pretty simple. The battery will be already in place. And all you have to do, which it comes with the uh, hardware, is you, you'll need to install these bolts with their nut to the negative terminal on the battery, black for, for negative and your red for positive. And uh, tighten it up. They don't go too hard. Just make sure they're snug and uh, they're a 10 millimeter. So just uh, two 10 millimeter wrenches should be fine for that. All right, so this is the other side of the generator. I've taken the cover off, two bolts. She pops, she literally just pops right off. All right, so here you have your dipstick and this is where you're also gonna add your oil for your generator, okay? Make sure something important is when you guys fill this thing up and you guys use um, the funnel that's included, which is pretty cool. It's got an extension on it and uh, it will it, make it real easy for you to put the oil in here and not make a mess. When you guys do do that, make sure it's on a flat surface um, because if you do it at an incline, like on a driveway, um, you risk the, the chance of either underfilling or overfilling it depending where the drain plug sits. So I recommend you guys do that highly on a flat surface so you guys can get the correct amount of oil. Too much oil is bad and obviously not enough is even worse. So down here, we've got our drain plug. And you know, after our break in, this is where we're gonna pull our oil out. Uh, something uh, that's uh, built in is pretty cool. It, it, it will make somewhat of a mess, but they thought about that and what they did was they put like, these walls right here and right here. So they made a compartment and they also added this rubber cover. So what this rubber cover lets you do, it lets you get a ratchet with an extension to the drain plug. Pretty cool. Also, you think, well, the oil is just going to puddle in here. So what they did is they added this rubber plug also in there. And you're, it allows you to bring and put your drain pan right under and collect all your oil. So after you're done that, you basically just got to run a rag in here, clean this up, and you're good to go. Install your rubber grommets in your door, and that's it. All right, and uh, lastly, mention the handle. To be able to move this uh, generator unit around, it's actually a pretty heavy generator. Uh, I used to be able to move around my 4000 without any help. It was still pretty heavy for me, but this thing's impossible. So... They've got two handles, one on each side, got some foam on it. Um, also, they've added this handle system, which is pretty cool. Just lift it, and it has a lock that locks automatically, and you've got a carrying handle. They thought about it pretty good, so this handle lets you get in between and kind of carry it like a wheelbarrow. And... Uh, it rolls pretty easy, it's pretty easy to roll. And uh, once you lift up the wheels on the back, it rolls around and you can put it in any corner in the garage or real easy to move. Also, last thing, uh, this generator, the reason I bought this generator and to replace my 4000 is not because the 4000 uh, went bad or or uh, just wasn't working anymore. It's it's because I'm considering using this to power my whole home as a complete generator uh, for the house. So um, I've bought the cable, the four prong 30 amp uh, cable for the generator. And I've also installed a hookup on the side of the house that goes to the panel. Um, I'll, I'll be doing a, another video after this one and showing you guys how to do that safely and also on uh, um, running the whole house, uh, including the central AC uh, on this generator. And, um, and I'll show you guys how to do that and also um, how I was able to run my central AC on a 9,500 watt generator. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate your views. Uh, basically my first review. So uh, 
Let me know how I did. Give me some comments and how I can make my future videos better. Thank you.